The Sydney Opera House is one of the world's most celebrated buildings. For many Australians, it's the backdrop to our nation. It provides us with a shared sense of belonging and pride. I'm Nikki, and the Sydney Opera House means a lot to me and the firm I work for, Arab, named after Sir Ove Arab, the lead structural engineer on the Sydney Opera House's original design. Joining me is my colleague, Peter, and today we're exploring the Sydney Opera House with some of the people who help maintain its legacy. <laughs> it always surprises you. This year, the Opera House turns 50, and having worked on the building for over 60 years, you could say our firm is a little house proud. Hi, Peter. Hi, Nikki. How are you going? I'm good. I'm very glad to be here today. I oh, know. How, how good is this? Next to the harbour, next to the Opera House. Who would want to be at work today, eh? Yeah, I think I should get my coffee here every day, actually. Yeah, me too. What are your first memories of coming to the Opera House? Well, I've had a bit of a long history with the Opera House. I, I was really lucky to be here just after it opened. Uh, we had our school speech night at the Opera House uh, about a month after the Opera House opened, so 1973. And I was a little kid and I got to perform on stage. But actually professionally, uh, about a year after I joined Arup, I was made the uh, design engineer, structural engineer for the forecourt uh, reconstruction for the uh, bicentennial. So I was uh, the design engineer for what we're sitting on here, the approach to the Opera House and the forecourt, as they call it, the, uh, the eighth stage. That was about 1986. <laughs> well, yeah, I think my first memory of the Opera House is some 20 years after that. <laughs> OK, don't show my age. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I grew up in Sydney. I was born and raised in Sydney. So the Opera House has always been yeah. part of my backdrop, you know, driving over or taking a walk or the train over the Harbour Bridge. I'd like to think that you know, I, I got to come here to see art and there was a bit of engineering and design sort of seeping in to yes. me as a young person. Um, Good. Yeah, I'd like to think, I'd like to hope that, you know. I hear you've spent a lot of time here lately too. Yeah, I was very lucky to get involved with MADE, which is the exchange program that the Opera House run with Denmark and yeah. Arab were involved with too. And obviously as an Arupian now, it's really part of our heritage and our history of design. Yeah, no question. I think our our history at Arup is inextricably linked to the to that of the Opera House. So, 1957, 66 years ago, we started work on the design with Utzon, and I think we've had an enduring relationship ever since. It's the reason we opened an office here in Sydney in 1963. I don't think Arup's ever been involved in a project that's had this much impact. I think it it's come to define the nation. It's come to define this city. It's come to define iconic building design anywhere in the world. And yet it's come to define Arup as well. I think it kind of pushed us to the limits. It, it, uh, it cemented, if you can excuse the pun, our reputation for design, innovation and excellence. So how about we go in and meet some of the team? OK, let's go. With so many amazing projects, I'm finding it hard to pick somewhere to start. But wait, what's happening up there on the sails? Hey Gordon, what are hey. you doing here today? I'm looking at the tiles today. Not just any tile, right? Well, no, of course, we're at the Sydney Opera House. We're going through an exercise that happens about oh, every five years to inspect the tiles for degradations, um, as well as the tile lids and the concrete on the way down. I heard that there's over a million tiles on the There Opera is House. something like a million three hundred and something. I've forgotten the last few numbers. I think we've been here nearly three weeks now. But how is it up there? It must be an amazing experience. It's pretty amazing, especially the first few times when you're doing it off of ropes uh, and you're like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm on the Sydney Opera House. I mean, I'd love to see how you, uh, how you inspect the tiles. We have got a little bit of a little tapper tool that we use just to tap the tiles, see if it's drummy or not. I'm listening for a hollow sound. If it's drummy, we'll mark it down and we'll make sure that uh, it gets fixed. Are you checking that it's not coming loose and not going to potentially fall off the upper house roof? Definitely, that's, that's one of the, the, the main objectives is to, to check nearly every single tile uh, for drumminess, cracks, if it's going to come off, if it's at risk of uh, detaching then we address it and so, you know, everyone's going to be safe. And I see you have an iPad, what do you use that for when you're on the roof? I'll show you if you come over. 
It's actually an Arup developed tool called AI 3D, Arup Inspect 3D. And so what we have here is a 3D model of the Sydney Opera House. And then we lodge all of our inspection data as individual points within the app with photos, recommendations, observations, and it's all time stamped. Well, Gordon, thanks for talking to me about the roof and it seems like it's time to get back up there and join the team. Yeah, that's for sure. I can't keep slacking, so I'll get up there and uh, keep on trucking. Yeah, those tiles are not going to tap themselves, Gordon. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Well, thanks for coming by. Yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. See ya. See you, Gordon. While Gordon taps away, I'm going to check out the Northern Foyer. It has one of the best views of Sydney Harbour, which you can see from a glass lift. Michael and Alex. Hello. <laughs> what a surprise. Fancy seeing you here. Yeah, good to see you. What did you work on with the Opera House? Uh, so I am a facade engineer. Uh, so facades is the outer skin of buildings. I'm a fire safety engineer. So all fire safety strategy for the whole building, but helped out with the concert hall and there's a whole surrounding space as well. Well, since I got you here, uh, can I tell you a little bit about this lift? Yes, I would love that. It seems like there's no structure. It's all just glass. One of the biggest challenges was how we got the roof to, to uh, work structurally uh, without adding an extra, extra steel. A lot of people wouldn't realize, but this lift was a new addition. Yes, and actually, it's uh, the biggest compliment I could get for someone to say that it sort of looks like it, it sort of fits in. Um, that was definitely what we were going for. It might not look like it, but the glass wall actually used to be along here. Uh, and to fit in this lift, we had to move it a little bit further down. Right. Uh, and you'll also notice that nothing's really straight or vertical on this structure. So all the bronze interfaces, they can actually adapt to take up the different geometries. Uh, that was something that was developed in the kit of parts in the original design. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we, we reuse in this design and adapted in, in uh, some different ways to fit in some new arrangements. And um, Alex, I was wondering, could you tell me a bit about the purpose of the lift and why it was installed? Yeah, absolutely. So. There's a lot of stairs to get to this northern foyer, which is spectacular. Great place to have a drink at intermission and enjoy the view. Um, but you used to not be able to get to it uh, without taking a lot of stairs. So this lift just allows everybody uh, of any accessibility to access both this space and the seats in the concert hall. I tell you what, it was really nice having this as a site office when I was doing the, um, the site work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> have you looked up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So Alex, this is also a brand new passageway that was installed with that lift. Yeah. How does it affect the fire strategy of the concert hall? Well, it's a brand new space in the building. It wasn't here at all before. So obviously you have to put in sprinklers and detection systems in there as well. Um, and it did kind of interrupt the way that the steps were here because mm -hmm. before it used to be one long flight of stairs. So we really had to consider the impacts for uh, like egress and how people come out of the concert hall and how they flow out to get to final exits. And also conveniently, you can access a fire stair that uh, branches off of the passageway there too, which is useful for both this part and the Northern foyer. Yeah, and this is really key to that accessibility um, path because you can enter from the flat ground here, go all the way to the back and then use that lift. Yes, that's right. Yeah, you can get um, to the lift and get up to, the, to all the levels on the Northern foyer. Also, another piece of architecture engineering that looks like has been here for 50 years. With a fair bit of effort to do that, yeah. but uh, it does look pretty seamless, doesn't it? Michael, Alex, thanks for showing me around. No worries. Our pleasure. The Northern Foyer's view is so stunning. I might stay here for the afternoon. While I'm busy trying to spot sunbaking seals out the glass windows, let's see what Peter is up to. Hi, Carolyn. Hey, Peter, how are you? Good, thanks, how are you? I'm good. Carolyn, where are we? We are sitting in the circle area of the Sydney Opera House Concert Hall. Awesome. Why in particular did we have to upgrade the Concert Hall? The most significant reason was to improve the quality of the acoustics for both patrons and for performers. There needed to be enhancements so that the performers could hear themselves and also so the sound could be projected across the entire space. Originally, we were meant to just have orchestral and symphonic music, but within 12 months of the opening of the house, 
there were two massive rock concerts with two of Australia's most iconic bands, mm. Sherbet and Skyhawk. <laughs> of course, yeah. So that was over 50 years ago and technology has changed a lot in the time since mm. then. So it sounds really challenging. How did we do it? Well, let me phone a friend for that one. Okay, <laughs> who's that? <laughs> Oh, hey, Caroline. Hey, hey, Zav. Sorry to bug you on your holiday. But hey, guess who I'm with? Peter Bailey. Hi, Zav. How are you? Hey, going well, going well. Hey, good. We were just uh, talking about the concert hall here, and I'd love to know what your role was. Yeah, so my role was lead structural engineer for the renewal of the concert hall. I was wondering if you had received the package I'd sent. I I've got, got a package. It. I've got it. I haven't given it what to package? him yet. Here, this package. Well, I oh, love getting presents. What is this? Just open it up. Well, it's an egg and an oyster shell. What's that about? It's a little cryptic, but it's a nice analogy of how we help to transform uh, the concert hall as part of the renewal project. The egg is the shape is quite narrow and quite tall, uh, similar in shape to the concert hall. So if you were to look at the stage, yeah. the stage area is very tall, um, particularly when you compare it to modern concert halls. Now, if you compare the egg shape to an oyster, an oyster is much flatter and much wider. What we found is that that type of natural shape is much better for spreading the acoustic energy around the room, and so the audience gets a much better appreciation for the power of the orchestra. Wow, I've learned something now. Me too. I never understood what this was about, but now it sounds very clear. All right, I'll put these away now. So when I look out on the stage, Zav, I can see an awful lot of uh, kit hanging from the roof, uh, which must be weighing down on the shelves. So how did you overcome that challenge? Historically, um, there weren't a huge number of contemporary shows with a heavy kit. Uh, and if you now look at modern shows, lots of uh, circuses and performance shows bring in, for example, large TVs. The venue originally had about eight ton of lifting capacity and that jumped to 40 ton in the new scenario. Wow. Our main challenge as the structural engineer was how do we hide 300 tons of new equipment up above the timber ceiling without anyone knowing? <laughs> and we ended up analyzing every single piece of steel. There are over 3,000 individual pieces of steel up there wow. to make sure that they could uh, cater for the new loads applied but a new rigging system. That's incredible. Like sitting here and looking up there, I would never know what's behind that ceiling and how much complexity is up there. It's completely hidden, but it's completely converted the way that the venue can be used. No, that's great, Zaf. Really good to speak to you. Thank you. Thanks for the eggs. <laughs> You're welcome. The sun is setting on a brilliant day at the Sydney Opera House. But before we head home, Peter is going to stop in and see a friend for a chat. So Louise, congratulations of the 50 years of the Sydney Opera House. How does it feel to celebrate such a milestone? In a lot of ways, it seems like a lot more than 50 years when you think of the impact that the Opera House has had. Yeah, it does, yeah. It feels like you think it's only been here, it's only been operating for 50 years. Yeah. In many ways, it feels like it's always been part of modern Australia. So yeah. it's a short time, but it's had a very deep impact. You must have had some amazing memories in your 10 odd years you've been here. Can you think of some favourites? Look, I'd have to say the reopening of the concert hall this yeah. time last year was truly a favourite moment. But just reaching that milestone, but Peter, today is another milestone. We just finished the waterproofing on the forecourt. It's so good having these milestones, <laughs> yeah. We've always got something to do on the Opera House, I think that's right. So look, I'm looking up there at the tiles, and look, one of my favourite quotes was from the architect Louis Kahn, famous American architect. He said, the sun never knew how beautiful its light was until it was reflected off this building. Um, what do you appreciate about the design? Well, I love the form. I love, I love how when you look at it from different angles, it looks so different. The fact that when you look at it from this side, it looks like a whale. And when you look at it from just 20 steps away around there, it's this very slim yeah. form. And so as you walk around, you just see so many different, different perspectives yeah. and it, it always surprises you. 
over the years, the Opera House has had a number of partners to help it. And, you know, Arab started work in 1957, so 66 years. Were you born? Okay, no, no, this is before <laughs> my time. How important is it to have some partners that are rooted in the past, but also future facing and, and going to be there for the duration because this building does have to last a long time and it's got a long journey to go on yet. It's so important. I mean, the design life was like 200 years. Let's hope it's way more than I'm 200 years. I'm hoping we'll get a thousand. <laughs> Let's hope we get a thousand. It is a, a sculpture and because there were no as-built drawings at the time, and we're still actually discovering how the place was built. In, yes, it, it's we are. a treasure, <laughs> and we don't actually know. There's a whole lot of stuff that we still don't know. So to be able to explore those things together of the past for the benefit of the future, I mean that that is a partnership, isn't yeah, it? That's it what is. relationships yeah. are about. What is our past and what is our future? Through and thick so, and thin. Through thick and thin. Your tenure as CEO has been full of achievement. Um, if you reflect back, what are you most proud of and what do you want to be your legacy? Thank you, first of all. Um, and thank you for being on the, being on the journey with <laughs> me actually as well, very much for all your support. I really mean that. No, sure. No. I think that when at the 40th anniversary, we set out to prepare the Opera House for future generations, we've spent $300 million on the works inside and out of the building preparing for future generations of artists, audiences and visitors. And now we're ready for whatever this next generation is and wants. Mm. And so actually turning the Opera House over, which has always been the people's house, to be everyone's house. Yep. So I hope what we are leaving for the next generation is the platform from which they can continue to develop everyone's house. Yeah, I think that's a great, that's been a great aim and I think you've achieved it. So Louise, it's been great speaking to you. Thank you for talking to us today. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you. Thanks. What an unforgettable day. I've learnt so much. I think what will stay with me is the incredible care and pride our people have for the Sydney Opera House. Ove Arup's passion and commitment for the building continues through our people who are shaping the building for the next generation.